programming a TerraSIC Intel FPGA board with Tina Cloud using schematic design entry. In this tutorial video, we'll show you how to create a digital circuit and download it to a TerraSIC DE10 Lite FPGA board by using Tina Cloud's schematic editor. In a similar way, it's also possible to download digital circuits to the FPGA of DesignSoft's Lab Explorer. The schematic design may contain gates or other built-in digital components in Tina Cloud, or macros defining digital components with hardware description languages such as VHDL or Verilog. In this video, we will use a free Intel tool, Quartus Prime Lite Edition which is required for the Intel Max 10 FPGA in the TerraSIC DE10 Lite board. For other Intel FPGAs, you might need to use the standard or pro edition of Quartus. These tools will be responsible for creating configuration files for the FPGA programmable logic. Now, let's see an example. Start Tina Cloud, then open the half adder gates.tsc file from the examples folder of Tina Cloud. The half adder is a simple combinational circuit to add two single binary digits and provide the output plus a carry value. It has two inputs called A and B and two outputs called sum and carry. This schematic diagram contains basic OR and inverter gates, high low switches, and logic indicators. Note you can find more information about the half adder circuit in our previous video, Simulation of Half Adder with Four Gates Using Tina Cloud. To test the circuit, press the DIG Interactive button. Play with the switches by toggling between low and high levels to produce all the input combinations. If both inputs are low, then sum and carry are also low. If just one input is high, then sum is high and carry is low. If both inputs are high, then sum is low and carry is high. Now, before testing our circuit in a real FPGA development board environment, we need to extend our schematic with FPGA pin connectors from the special toolbar of Tina Cloud. Pin connectors as certain elements such as clocks, push buttons and LEDs are pre-connected to the FPGA chip's pins on the development board. The FPGA development tools call them constraints. Now modify the schematic by adding the FPGA pin connectors. Select FPGA pin from the special toolbar and add four FPGA pins to the circuit's inputs and outputs as shown next. Connect the first FPGA pin to input A. Double-click Pin 1, and in the Properties window, click the three dots at the end of the Pin Settings field. The FPGA Pin Settings window appears. The Device section of the window contains the list of supported boards in the Tina Cloud system. In the Group section, the types of input-output parts, e.g., SW, switches, on the selected board, e.g., the TerraSIC DE10 light are listed. Once you select a type in the Group Settings section, e.g. switches, in the Pin Type Settings section, the connection pins of the selected type of parts appear, e.g. SW0. These connection pins should be associated with the corresponding nodes in the Tina Cloud schematic. We'll rename the FPGA input and output pins, including their labels, accordingly, as those on the FPGA boards, to which they will be connected. For the inputs, we will use SW0 and SW1. And for the outputs, LEDR0 and LEDR1. From the device setting list, select the TerraSIC DE10 light. Next, click SW switches under the group section, then select SW0 from the pin list on the right side. Then click OK. In the properties window, Rename Label Pin 1 as SW0 as well, then click OK. Select the next FPGA pin and connect it to input B, then rename it as shown next.
rename its label as well. Now connect the half adder circuit outputs to the LEDs. Place the FPGA pins and select the proper entries. For some, use LED R0 as output. Repeat this procedure for carry. Rename carry as LED R1. Okay, now let's see how to generate the source file for Intel Cordis Lite. Click the T&M menu, select Export to FPGA Software, and click Intel Cordis. Next, open and extract the half adder gates FPGA export.zip file. Create a folder, and we'll name our folder Designs. Then, save the half adder gates.vhd and the half adder gates.qsf files into this newly created folder. Note that Tina Cloud always creates a VHD file from any type of representation of the digital circuit. That is, schematic diagrams, VHDL, Verilog codes or combinations, thereof are always translated into a VHD file for Quartus. The QSF, Quartus Prime Settings file guides the FPGA software, for which, the physical pins on the FPGA will be the inputs and outputs. The QSF is made from the FPGA pin settings we made previously. To produce downloadable content, we first have to create the Quartus Prime Lite project. Start Quartus. Select File, then click New Project Wizard. Enter the working directory name, in our case, C colon backslash designs, and the project name, Half Adder Gates. Click Next. Click Next again. Now, add the source file. From the designs folder, select the half adder gates.vhd file as a source file. Then cl click Next. In the Family Device and Board Settings dialog, under Device Family, select Max 10. Now, you can manually select the 10M50DAF484C7G Terrasic board from the available devices. Click Next. Leave the EDA tool settings on default. Click Next again. Finally, press the Finish button. Now, Quartus is initializing our project. We can check the half adder gates.vhd file by clicking on the half adder gates file in the Project Navigator. Copy the entity name and set it as the top level entity under the Assignments menu point. Click Assignments and select Settings. Paste the entity name into the top level entity field in the dialog. Click OK. Let's add the QSF file as well. Click Assignments. And select Import Assignments. From the Designs folder, select the half adder gates.qsf file. The content of the QSF file will tell the software which FPGA pins are to be used for the logic inputs and outputs. Click OK. Now, to produce configuration data for the FPGA, right-click on Compile Design, then click Start. Now, connect the DE10 light with the Quartus machine via USB. As soon as the Quartus Prime full compilation was successful message appears, right-click the program device, then click Open. Click the Start button to program the device. You will see the progress bar at 100% successful message. And the conf LED will light up on the board. Now, let's see how our simulated half adder circuit works along with the programmed DE10 light hardware. To have a closer look at the DE10 light hardware, we will now zoom into the area of the two switches, SW0 and SW1, and the corresponding LEDs, LEDR0 and LEDR1. We'll change the virtual switches in Tina Cloud by clicking them on the screen. And at the same time, we will also change the real switches on the DE10 light board. If both inputs are low, then sum and carry are also low. If just one input is high, then sum is high and carry is low. If both inputs are high, then sum is low and carry is high. 
As you can see, in all cases, the results are exactly the same. This is a great example of demonstrating the power of simulation, since you can test and debug circuits even before realizing them. And in our case, before downloading to FPGA, where if there were any issues, it would be extremely hard to find the problem. This concludes our video tutorial of programming an FPGA development board using schematic diagrams with Tina Cloud's built-in digital components. Check out our other videos where we use VHDL and Verilog components in FPGA design. For more information, visit our website, www.tinacloud.com. Visit our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com user slash Tina Design Suite.